The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents with Dr. Jeffrey Seif. Hearty shalom to all of you. Jeffrey Seif here again with another edition of Zola Levitt Presents, and this is a special edition at that. I'm thrilled to introduce you to Naim Curry, a friend of mine, a friend of our ministry, an Arab Christian from Bethlehem. There is a fantastic testimony here. What a story. And I am thrilled to bring it to you coast to coast. Everyone needs to hear what this man has to say. Fasten your seat belts. You're going to be touched deeply in your heart. I was born in the real, in the old city of Jerusalem. My grandfather was Greek priest, had 11 uncles and cousins. They were Greek priests, but thank God to God, 42 years ago, I was invited to a young people meeting in Jerusalem for the first time where I heard the gospel, how Jesus Christ died on a cross for me, how he shed his precious blood that night. The Holy Spirit grabbed my heart and I could not leave that place without making a decision. How old were you? I was almost 17, 17, a few months. So from a family of uh, Arab, Palestinian, Greek Orthodox, yes. uh, a teenager accepts Jesus. Yes, that was a very, very unusual uh, to be raised in a priesthood home, a very religious home. And uh, th that night, the Holy Spirit really grabbed my heart and I trusted Jesus Christ, my personal savior. I came back home very happy, very excited, tried to share what's happened with me. And I bet you they weren't all happy and excited. Not really, not really. <laughs> when I explained to them what that uh, born again means, uh, they could not understand it because the term born again those days was not known in the Middle East. And to be raised in a priesthood home and to be the baby among 10 children that was very, very difficult. And they started giving me a hard time, uh, persecution. And from in the beginning of my life with the Lord, I have learned how to pray. I have discovered the power of prayer in my life. And that was really awesome thing to do, to be able to depend on the Lord while everybody's against you, turn against you, persecute you, and all of that. But I have learned to trust in Jesus and lean on the Lord. You know, Jewish believers have the same kind of situation where we accept Jesus and all of a sudden it makes problems. Yes, that's true. That's true. And uh, they start giving me a hard time, and I start to pray. And I believe that God's going to do something. After seven years of persecution, my mom came to know the Lord, praise the Lord. And she and I, we start to pray uh, because two to pray is better than one. Mm -hmm. And year after year, that's the awesome thing took place after that. Year after year, I saw brother after brother, sister after sister uh, came to know the Lord as their personal savior, accepted the Lord as their personal savior. And it was uh, really a blessing to me, except uh, the last one, the oldest one, the last one, uh, it took 27 years, believe me, 27 years, daily prayer for him, for his soul. And after 27 years, the Lord really touched his heart and he started to cry like a baby, trusting Jesus Christ as his personal savior to God be the glory for the great things he has done. He lives in the Mount of Olive with five children in a very, very, uh, heavy populated non-Christian area and uh, start to witness and start to share the gospel. They didn't like it. They asked him to leave the neighborhood. He refused to. But eight years ago, he was coming home one night in a very dark evening. Three men attacked him with axes and knives and they murdered him. 
he went to be with the Lord. Well, let's just stop here. We've gone from a, a happy story of someone accepting Jesus, prevailing in prayer, the family getting saved. One of the brothers who gets saved in the Mount of Olives is attacked and murdered for his faith. Yes. Yes. Axes, knives, it's that, horrible. That took place eight years ago, Brother Jeff. And uh, the question is always in my mind through all these years, somebody has to pay a price to serve the Lord Jesus Christ somewhere around the globe. And to those who are listening to this interview, I would like to ask them with the great love, what kind of price are they paying to serve Jesus in their neighborhood, in their cities, in their communities? It is a real good question, but the most beautiful part about it, the result of the death of my oldest brother, my oldest son, Stephen, God called him to preach the gospel full time, and now he is pastor in North Jerusalem. Calvary Church so in he, Jerusalem. So he used the death to bring about new life for his own purposes. Exactly. You know, exactly. there's in Exodus it says the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied. And, yes. And it was a church leader who once said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. You've experienced that here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We see it. We experience it. And we saw the outcome of that. It's a blessing sometimes. You know, it's not always... Uh, grieve and, and uh, you know, sadness, but God's way is not like our ways. God will uh, bring back to you something good out of that, and he did. Well, since we're on the track, and, and by the way, my heart grieves as we speak for my Arab Christian brothers and sisters in Christ here in Israel, Bethlehem, Israel. Your brother was martyred here a few years ago. My understanding as well is that you were shot not long ago, four times. Yes, sir. I, uh, I thank God for my uh, story that in the beginning, we never thought about the Old Testament. Christians in those days, they are away from uh, the Old Testament. They consider it a Jewish book history book, rubbish book. But after I was saved, the Holy Spirit started to speak to my heart concerning the Old Testament. I went ahead and, and find one and started to read uh, the Old Testament. And the more I read the Old Testament, the more God started to put special love in my heart for the Jewish people. And that's odd, you know, just uh, a Palestinian, and uh, just came out of war. Uh, Israel took over e Jerusalem and West Bank and Gaza. And you say God put special love in your heart for the Jewish? I said, yes. There's a lot of tension, a lot of pressure. You're reading the Bible with Jesus in your heart, and you're alighting upon passages that speak about God's love for the Jews and for Israel. That puts you at odds with a lot of friends that are unhappy with Jewish presence. And that will really put me in a very, very uh, difficult situation. Because before I was saved as a Greek Orthodox, I, I don't know nothing about the New Testament. We're not allowed even to discuss the Old Testament or read the Old Testament. They consider just only Jewish book. And when I start doing that, that really opened my eyes spiritually and opened my eyes also physically to understand what the covenant of God with Abraham meant. And I started to read more and more, and the more I read, the more God increases that love in my heart for the Jewish people. And that's odd. That's not usual. That's odd, and that becomes part of your message. It's not just that God so loved the world that he sent his son, it's that God loves even the Jewish world. That's a tough message to give for an Arab pastor here in Israel. Yes, because that time I have decided to accept the Bible. The Bible is the 66 books, the infallible inspired word of God. Not only the Bible as they taught us, while we are so young, only the New Testament. No, that's not true. And that's why 
both Jews, Palestinians, Arab, uh, anybody need to know that Jesus died for them. He loves them. Okay, so if I understand your story correctly, um, well, in fact, if you would go ahead and tell it, you're, we're, we're here at the church now, your church in Bethlehem, and your home is on the property of the facility. Uh, you're coming home one evening, or what happens when you get shot, if I can ask? Yes, uh, as, I, as I said before, believing in the covenant of God with Abraham, you make a lot of enemies right. among the uh, traditional churches, like the Palestinians, the Arabs, because they do believe in the replacement theology. In other words, Israel, uh, church replace Israel, uh, God has finished uh, with Israel and all of that, but that's not true. God has not finished with, is with Israel yet. And uh, the result of that, uh, they did not like for me to teach the whole truth about the Bible and the covenant. In other words... So you're telling that story here in your church yes. and word is getting out and yes. people are coming and talking to you saying you need to get rid of that message and you said no. No, I cannot because I believe in the whole Bible. I believe in the Old and New Testament as inspired uh, infallible word of God. It's the covenant of God. And God said to me, he said, if you need to be blessed, you need to explain and share the full covenant that the promises of God with Abraham, it's an everlasting covenant forever and ever and ever, and no one can replace it or change it. The result of that, I start to face difficulties and problems here in Bethlehem. This church was bombed 14 times. 14 times. times. And uh, four years ago, I was shot four bullets. One hit my left shoulder here and a uh, lot of threaten, a lot of difficulties, but uh, I believe from all my heart that my time is not to go yet. I need to keep the message, well, preach the message. I guess it's not your time yet because you're still here and you're still preaching Amen. and teaching. Now on the way here, uh, our producer, Ken Berg, told me, he says, there's someone that you need to meet. This is, uh, they said, he said, Jeffrey, you, you need to meet Pastor Curry because you came so highly recommended. I can understand why now that I'm hearing your story. Persecuted for your faith in Jesus, given for dead for wanting to stand with Jewish people in a church that was bombed 14 times. Yes, sir. Um, it's honor for me to serve my Savior because he's a living Savior. It's an honor for me to be in your presence, to tell you the truth. Thank you. You are most welcome uh, here. And we just thank God for what he's doing here. We've seen miracle after miracle took place in our church, almost 48 miracles the last two or three years. I mean, serious miracles. You talk about cancer being healed. You talk about multicerosis being healed. You talk about heart disease being healed. You talk about a lot of rheumatism uh, being healed one after one, and the most awesome ministry we've seen the last five years, Brother Jeff, is the deliverance ministry. The deliverance ministry has been awesome ministry, seeing a lot of people been delivered by, from demonic spirits, and they're getting saved, they're getting baptized, they join the church, and they, some of them sing in the choir today, praising the Lord Jesus Christ. So it seems that uh, as the, the devil tries to assault you, that God is just taking you from glory to glory in your ministry. Amen. Because the devil never ever was victorious any time. He has been defeated and he is been defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we have victory in Jesus. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, serving him faithfully. When we are faithful to him, he will stay faithful to us. I really love that guy. And uh, I trust that he's made his way into your heart just as he made his way into mine. An Arab Christian, a guy who came to faith in Jesus, developed a love for Jesus 
developed a love for Scripture. And Jesus, in the Scripture, led him to the Jewish people. It's easier to stand for Israel here in the States than it is there in the West Bank. And he does that so elegantly. I was thrilled on our dime to wanna, uh, want you to be exposed to him so his story could be heard coast to coast so we could learn about the special ways that God is moving in Israel, moving through him, moving through our ministry. The Lord's moving through you as well. I want to talk more about the Lord's moving, and we'll get back to that in a minute. For insightful perspectives of Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. When you call, be sure to ask for our free catalog with the latest videos, books, and music. Our correspondence course, the Institute for Jewish Christian Studies, includes reading packets, teaching CDs, and mail-in tests. You may want to join us on an upcoming tour of Israel or Petra, or cruise the Mediterranean visiting Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. I've had a blast. You know, the, the biggest thing that I really have to say is that I've got my money's worth already, and we're about halfway through the trip. It's just been unbelievable how much we've seen. Um, incredibly professional, really well thought out. Um, everywhere we get, you can tell they thought about we were the fact that we were coming, um, it's really nice to be so well taken care of. I have felt so safe here. Uh, I feel safer here than I do in the United States. Let me encourage you to make a trip of a lifetime to come here. You'll love it. I promise. For tour information, call 1-800-WONDERS. When it comes to going to Israel, uh, we're not the only act in town. If you want to go to Israel, I'm glad you're going. But if you want to go with us, we're going to take you to see the people, not just the steeple. It's not just about sites. It's about living organisms. That's why I'm thrilled for you to have experienced Pastor Curry and why I'm thrilled for you to hear the guy that's coming up in a minute because we're going to take you to the people, Arab Christian people, Jewish people who have come to faith. We want you to see what God is doing there today. If you're interested in that story but can't go with us to Israel, you might want to pick up our magazine, The Levitt Letter. It's available. You can call 1-800-WONDERS to get a tour brochure. You can call that same number and get our magazine. Or go to www.levitt.com. A cover story of a recent one, A Muslim Observes a Jewish Land. And this is a positive spin, by the way. You're going to get stories not typically covered in the popular press. Talk about stories not typically covered. The offer in this program is a story that was written a few years ago. It's of the Bible. And Zola and Dr. Tom McCall wrote the Bible Jesus read. We're all about Bible teaching. We think that if the Bible can get into the head and make its way to the heart, bingo. There are solutions there for Mideast peace. There are solutions there for the troubles that you face as you can experience the Prince of Peace. We're going to hear now from Ari, one of the pioneers. His family were going back to some of the very first Jewish believers in Jesus in the modern nation state of Israel. This is fascinating, and this is coming to you. Off we go now as David Dolan introduces one of Israel's first and finest. And I was one of seven children. A, to father mother, which were the first couple that started a family of believers in this country. So when they came, my father came 1928 already hmm. to Israel. Actually, my mother came even before, but as a baby, uh, she was only four years old and she got malaria. And uh, her parents had to take her back to Bulgaria. But we were grown here in Jerusalem uh, from 1944 uh, we passed here the independent war, uh, even though my father got a ticket that he could leave the country. But he didn't want, he wanted to stay here to be part of the nation. And uh, wow, we found ourselves around 15 years, actually almost the only family of believers in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we, the children, the brothers, we were six brothers, one sister, we were very all the time between us because there were no others. Uh, 
But I remember when my father said, you will see when we will be 70 believers in this city. And then he said, you will see when we will be 700. <laughs> Actually, he didn't see the days that we were 7,000 because he passed during the Gulf War, 1991. But it's amazing to see nowadays how, how many assemblies you have in Jerusalem. How many are all there? Believers. I think more than 15. More Spre than 15? Yeah, spread all over. Some of them I never heard about them. Right, spread all over Jerusalem. Arya, you came from a Messianic family, a believing family from your youth. So obviously you were a believer while you were in the military serving in the various wars and that. What was it like? You must have been about the only believer in your unit. What was that like? Yeah, actually, I faced five wars that I took part. And um, I include also the Iraq, you know, because I was a commander of very big area. And from many points, this was very hard because first time we saw more than 30 of the of the missiles we saw Gosh. them how they crossed here mm -hmm. just above us the atmosphere and falling on Ramat Gan Tel Aviv where all my family used to live a I've been in all these wars in the front really in the first units I choose it I wanted it I wanted that's why I volunteered to be a part of your and that's why I really believe that we believers have to be in the front we have to be the anchor, the a, really the source of encouraging our people. We know that we are not really keeping, you know, the autonomy 20. We don't have people that will come and encourage the nation. Don't be afraid because God is in front of us. But we, I believe me as a believer, I'm taking the place of a priest. And there was a, wo a priest in the war. And he had to encourage the people, and that's what I did. I encouraged my units, my soldiers, my commanders, uh, through all these wars. And uh, I can write books about what is the meaning for a believer to be in a war. Uh, I just want to mention one thing in the Gulf War, just to show you from where it came. We had Bible studies at Ramat Gan. This was the city that was bombed more than any other place in Israel. We used to go every Shabbat night to Ramat Gan. Now all the other Shemona was, was full of people, we call them Ramat Gan refugees. <laughs> They'd come up they here They came in the here, hills. and when they've heard that we are going to Ramat Gan, they said, you're crazy, they are, they are bombing the city. And we, we told, we're not crazy. We went down there in my father's home, he was 86 years old, with all our children, we were in we had Bible studies. Our church was our home. And then the siren started that the missile is going to come. And you had to look on my father. He stood for a moment and then he said, I'm not going to give Saddam Hussein one minute from our meeting. We are continuing. And he was preaching and sharing. On the side, you can hear the sirens and then the bombs. Some of them fell so close that some of the shutters were broken, right? Mm. And he continued with his Bible teaching. And for me to see this kind, because this all, all the life was like this. My father and mama, my mother, they left Bulgaria in Second World War in the bombings. And to see through all this year, what is the meaning that during war, you are trusting the Lord and He is on your side. And I shared it so many times, this verse, thousand will fall in one side, 10,000, it will not touch you. I shared what happened with me in, in the wars, fulfilling this word. So this is war for me was an um, amazing time when I could see how God really shows himself in wonderful, wonderful way. Not only to me, but to so many which were around.
Zola's music is beautiful, isn't it? And how about those testimonies? I'll tell you, I'm always going to remember Ari for this. Uh, when those missiles are coming over, he doesn't want to give the devil a minute. His father says, I'm going to keep uh, preaching on and ignore that fella. The reason why that's going to stick with me is I think we give the devil way too much attention. I don't know about you, but it's easy for me to get wrapped around internally. Those engines get turned on. I get negative. My nose goes down. I give him way too much airtime. I love it. He says, I'm not going to give Saddam a minute, and I'm going to try and learn something. I try and learn something from all of my experiences with people, with the Bible. I hope you do, too. That said, I hope you're learning something from this, that is, this program, these testimonies, our ministry. If you want to keep in touch, you might want to try uh, connecting with Zola Levitt on uh, Twitter, MySpace, Facebook, YouTube. We're out there. We're out there because you help us. Thank you so much for going with us on the journey. If you want to connect with us, you might want to try our website www.levitt.com Speaking of uh, connecting, stay connected with Jesus through prayer. And as you go now, please, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our offer on this program, The Bible Jesus Read, is an entertaining and thorough tour of the Old Testament. A readable study that is relevant to all who want to understand the beginning of God's plan and the roots of the church on earth. The theology is understandable and treated with thoroughness. The Bible Jesus Read. Also, please call toll-free or write to receive our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. It's absolutely free and contains insightful article and news commentary with a refreshing perspective you won't get from the mainstream media. The Levitt Letter is also available at levitt.com, along with current and archived TV programs, our national airing schedule, and much more. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.